Level 1. In this class, we'll be treating friction force, surface tension, and viscosity. Now, let's start with friction force. What do you understand by friction force? Friction force is the force that opposes the motion of a body. So, what that means, what that literally means is that if an object is trying to move forward and the surface on which the object is is on is rough, based on the fact that the surface is rough, the surface of that the surface on which the body is resting we supply a friction force so we go backwards if the object is going forward so that's basically what um friction force means now there are some rules there are some laws laws of solid friction we also have liquid friction which is where viscosity comes in which i said we should deal with uh, friction force so friction force is more of like specifically the one we are dealing with is specifically solid friction then viscosity is more like liquid friction so i said the frictional force is the force generated by two surfaces that contact and slide against each other so a few a few factors affecting frictional force uh, those forces are mainly affected by the surface texture as i said before that the surface has to be rough enough for the frictional force to actually um be present and then the amount of force uh impelling them together yeah so these statements more like all the statements here under a few for other a few factors affecting friction forces basically just summarized all the solid laws of friction so let's go over them and then we take them so then these forces are mainly affected by the surface texture yes for smooth surfaces friction force is zero while for rough surfaces it is maximum and then he said, and it's also mainly affected by the amount of force impelling them together. So what they are saying is that the frictional force is proportional to the normal reaction. Don't forget that, um, yeah, the frictional force is proportional to the normal reaction. And then you can then change that to frictional force equals new half, where the new is now the um, constant. And the name of that constant is coefficient of friction. Now you can have coefficient of friction, and we can have coefficient of we have, we have coefficient of kinetic friction, we can have co coefficient of dynamic friction, we can have co uh, coefficient of static friction, either of the two. And I will still explain what um, the two of them um, indicate. So this is from the first statement, we know that okay, what the frictional force is proportional to what is dependent on the surface tension, uh, the surface texture, and then it's also what directly proportional to what to the force impelling them together which is the normal force so the frictional force is um, proportional to what the normal force now the normal force is let's say you have um let's say this surface this line this straight black line now where this cursor is now and it's this black line is in contact with this purple purple surface now to now the the force impelling them together will be the normal force the force like adding pressure on the on the on the object that is on that surface it is holding it is keeping it in contact with, with the ground so it has to be perpendicular to to the object that's for the normal force another one that the angle and position of the object affect the amount of friction force yes that's very true because the moment you incline that like friction force on an inclined surface is quite different from friction force from um from a normal flat surface because as i said before when we were talking about um is it vectors or so that once a particular force is inclined at an angle it significantly diminishes its impact and we are still dealing with frictional force here so it will definitely diminish its impact when it's inclined at an angle so if an object is placed flat against an object then the frictional force will be equal to the object to it Yes, that is, that will be the maximum, the maximum friction force that the object can actually exert to be the object weight. But then, that does not mean that if you apply a 50 newton, if let's say, assume that the weight of the object is, um, is 100. Now, if you apply a 50 newton force to the object to move it, the object will not move because the the friction force will also increase to the same magnitude as the force that you are applying. 
but then the, the friction has what has its own mag like it has the maximum above which it cannot go above it can't go more than that which is that 100 newton which is the friction force. so if you apply force equal to 100 newton the object will be at the point of actually moving because you see a question like that where when the force was applied the object was about to move so that means that the frictional force and the force applied are equal to each other and then if you now apply like 100 newton then the object will now move with an extra what 10 newton then you can do the calculation of uh, the velocity the acceleration now if an object is pushed against the surface then the frictional force will increase and become more than the width of the object so that means if you are pushing the object against the surface that means you are in, you are increasing the the normal force now if you are pushing it to the surface so it will be difficult for the object to actually move that's why if someone is trying to move something and you are sitting on it it becomes very hard for the person to actually move because you are you already increase the normal force acting on that object so the person will have to like use more extra force to actually pull the object so now as i said before that the frictional force is equal to what is equal to normal times the um, normal force times the uh, coefficient of static the coefficient of friction which is the new now as i said before that we have we have coefficient of static friction we have coefficient of dynamic friction now static friction before i go into the coefficient because for you to have the coefficient that means you have the friction coefficient of static friction the coefficient of dynamic friction so let's start with dynamic friction now coefficient of dynamic friction friction is the coefficient the uh, dynamic uh, static friction is the force required to move a body and for it to actually maintain the motion of your body so that means the body is stationary is static is at rest and then you are applying the force to actually move it and then after moving it after overcoming the frictional force to move it and then you still now maintain that movement why the non friction is the um, force that you require to actually keep the object moving the object is already moving it's dynamic it's in motion and then you are just applying a force to it to actually maintain that motion because if you don't maintain if you don't apply a force to it the frictional force will will reduce the the object's motion and then it will come to a, it will come to a stop so that's an emphasis emphasis on the fact that static friction is the force required to what start it first and then maintain it why the friction is what the force required to what to just maintain it so that means that static friction is more is greater than what dynamic friction is usually larger than dynamic friction and don't forget that we said what frictional force is equal to what new f so if the um and okay, then the coefficient of the coefficient of static friction the coefficient of dynamic friction is just the new that you use in the formula for calculating the static friction and from this formula now you can see that frictional force is equal to new f yes so that means that Frictional force is proportional to what to the new as well. We can assume that that's if we assume that okay, the normal force is like is constant. So that means that if the frictional force is great, if it's frictional force is great, the new will be great. So, so since the static frictional force is great, so the coefficient of static friction will also be greater than the coefficient of dynamic friction. I hope you understand that part. Okay, so as I just said, normal force is equal to mg since um force tends to balance off and if you place an object on the surface the weight will be going to work downwards so the reaction of that surface will be the normal reaction okay you just explained uh, the question here okay you can pause the video to just go through this if you want to So now, how do you calculate frictional force? You already have your formula. The frictional force equals to new n. They might give you new, or they might give you normal, or you might have to calculate your normal from your weight, and then you can calculate if you're ever given the new and the and your normal reaction or your weight of the object, then you can calculate your frictional force. And then there are some times that this stuff will be inclined at an angle. Now, if it's inclined at an angle, then you have to use the component of the weight that is perpendicular to that surface so you have to uh, emphasize on the fact that frictional force is proportional to the perpendicular force so you should just be looking for the force that is perpendicular and in that case now since the surface is inclined the perpendicular force will no longer be the weight anymore it will be a component of the weight i just give you a routine 
Ok, 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 ok. I said fluid fusion, which is under viscosity. I think I have to deal with that. Under viscosity. So, that will be all for friction. So, I'll see you guys in class. So, I will cheat questions pertaining to some key areas of friction and force. But then, before, before you go, pause the video and attempt this question. And then you can pause the video right now, attempt this question. And then here is your answer. You can attempt the second one too. And here is also your answer. I'll see you guys in the next. Oh, we're not done. Now to viscosity. To the viscosity. Now, what is viscosity? Now, most fluids often, most fluids offer some resistance to motion, and we call this resistance viscosity. Now, viscosity arises when there is relative motion between the surface, the, between the layers of liquid. Now, when you liquid, we we said that when you are talking about the state of matter, I said that uh, solids can can't separate. The particles of solid cannot move significantly away from one another. Why the particles of liquid we can see slide over one another? Why the particles of gases can move freely from one another? So now, when the the, the different layers of uh, li liquid are moving against each other, they can either move very fast or very slow. In case of example of those that move very fast is water because then you just pour water, it does the point, does the point. And then those that move very slow is what is palm oil. Those that do, the subject of this. If I do those ones that are more that come together, it's very the motion is like extremely small. That was the viscosity of palm oil is greater than the viscosity of what of water. So and based on the fact that viscosity is the measure of what fluid resistance to what to flow. Now the formula for calculating now the formula for calculating the viscosity is the ratio of sharing stress to velocity gradient which is 2 times gravitational force times area times area of the um the times the radius, radius of the sphere because the the object is actually the fluid is always moving in a cylindrical object so you calculate the area over which the object is actually uh, moving and then you have um, density difference between the fluid and the sphere tested, and then you have attraction to gravity at the same that and you have the velocity of the sphere. So more like you roll a sphere inside the liquid. Now the area of that sphere you note it down. The attraction to gravity you note it down. The velocity of the sphere when it's moving inside that liquid you note it down. And then the density difference between the fluid, the difference in density between the fluid and the sphere, you note it down as well too. So just take note, take note of this formula. Take note of this formula. Let's talk about coefficient of viscosity. So, the, the we can calculate viscosity itself. The only thing we can calculate is coefficient of viscosity. And as I said before, that the, um, the formula for calculating it is what is stress stress over the velocity gradient. And this is this, this is basically the derivation. This is the derivation where f is the uh, frictional force between the two layers so this is the derivation so you can just pause the video and note the formula down okay so that's that for um viscosity
Now let's go to surface tension. Take note of the formula for calculating viscosity. Take note of for calculating the tension of viscosity. You might be asked under dimensions. Take note. Okay. Now let's go to surface tension. Now surface tension is the tendency of free surface to stick into the minimum surface area possible. Now what that means is you if you observe if you pour water in a test tube while in secondary school, you notice that the test tube body tends to the water level tends to be it should be curved. It is not usually uh, like straight up, it's always curved. It's from like a many scores. So it and that is actually due to what surface tension. And surface tension you know like the force over the length. Now the, uh, the surface, that curved surface has a length. So the force, basically the force of the water, the, there's usually a force that is pulling the uh, surface of the water downwards. Now the force is always greater at the center. That's why for water, the surface is significantly bent downward. Now there are some that they are a little bit curved upwards. Like instead of bending downwards, now instead of bending like this, they are bending like this. They are bending like this. They are, their own motion is not like their own structure is more like this. Is curved upward. So surface tension is tension of the surface film of a liquid caused by the attractions attraction of the particles in the surface layer by the bulk of the liquid. This tends to minimize surface area. As I said before, basically what I just explained now. So these are these are some of the values for um, the surface tension. Now, as I said before, that the surface tension is as a result of the force of the entire body liquid acting on the surface. So you know that the um, surface tension is dependent on what on the force, and then the length along with the force is also acting. So that's L. So that means your surface tension is equal to what force over L. That's another calculation of surface tension. Now, fantastic. They already calculated the um, the dimension for you, so you can just pause the video and just write it down. So uh, you won't waste your time in the exam of trying to um, calculate for the stuff anymore. Okay, so that's all for surface tension. We'll treat more questions, more UTM questions in class to emphasize some other areas that this particular um, um, article is missing. So see you guys in my in the next class. I'll see you guys in class.